Hey, Amanda here. Now we're going to grow our bacterial cultures that we talked about in the last video. And well, we've already grown them, right? And we're going to store them in a solution so that we can keep them in the minus 80 freezer for good. And anytime that we wanna go in there, we can just um, look in the library where this bacterial strain is and take a little bit and streak it out on a plate to start all over again. Um, okay, so uh, as always, my bench is clean. Gas is on. And we store these cultures in little tubes that are two mil tubes. They're called cryovials. And they just allow us to store them at really cool temperatures. They have a, a threading that doesn't freeze. So it makes it a little bit easier. It's like a gasket on there. And it's just a regular tube. Um, one thing is that we do use these uh, kind of fancier rack holders for them because the bottoms don't fit really well. So they are they are self-standing, but um, they're a little unstable because they're a little top heavy. And so um, having them in a little rack like this is really helpful. Now, the first thing that we're going to do is um, we are going to pipette 50% glycerol. This is autoclaved 50% glycerol. Um, we know that it's autoclaved because it has this autoclave tape on it. And remember that high heat and high pressure are what um, trip this tape for indicating that something is sterilized, right? And um, we will be using, we use 50% glycerol to achieve a final concentration final concentration of 25% glycerol. So what this actually means is that we have 50% um, glycerol in this, um, in this reagent bottle, 50% water. And the reason for that is that glycerol is really viscous. It's gooey, kind of reminds you of like molasses or honey. And it, if you tried to um, pipette this, it is like sucking honey through a straw, right? And so we want to be able to pipette it more easily and be more precise with how much volume we draw up. So this is why we use a 50% glycerol. And because our final concentration of glycerol is what we need is only 25%, um, what we will end up doing is make a one mil one mil solution here, where 500 microliters is coming from this 50% glycerol and 500 microliters is straight from this culture that was grown overnight from the single colony. And so in the end, if 50% if of 50% 50 is 25, right? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> My mental math is great, I swear. Um, then you're going to have a final concentration in here of one mil being uh, that 25% glycerol from this 50% glycerol. Now, um, I like to get into the habit of pipetting all of my glycerol before I ever touch um, the cultures. That way that I know I'm not contaminating um, pipetting from one culture tube to the next culture tube. And um, I will show you how I go about doing that. I'll do a couple examples. I'm not going to do all of them because we have quite a few samples to work with. Um, we have labeled our, our tubes. This just helps me uh, keep track of our strains a little bit more. It's likely that we'll do, um, so I'm going to do two aliquots or two replicates of the same culture, make two copies essentially. And from these two copies, um, we may be able to take one if we want to save it for our main bacterial library and we could slap a new label on it and just put it into the library directly. Ideally, we would do this after we have some sort of a species name or even a 16S bacterial identification because TD, or I keep on saying TD, TW purple, is not helpful if we really care about a specific bacteria that we're going to do an analysis with. So from here, I'm going to take off the lids and I put them with their top down.
So then our tops are down there and the tubes could more or less stay in there. Now um, we're going to slightly undo the lid to the 50% uh, glycerol just to give us some flexibility when we want to remove it because we'll have to do sterile technique with that as well. And we are going to use a one mil pipette to do this. The one mil pipette has the capacity of pipetting 100 microliters to 1,000 microliters. You can see here, it's called a P1000 and 1,000 microliters is the same as one mil. So this is my one mil pipette. And we need to use one mil pipette tips to put the pipette onto the pipette uh, tip you just line up the bottom there. And a lot of times I, I give it a little tap. I just make sure that it's in there. Um, now, you do also need to change the reading of the pipetter. Um, the way that you can do this, uh, a lot of pipettes are different. So this one has a lock. You could see right here. You could see right there, it has right there. It has a pull to unlock sign. It's kind of hard to see with this angle. There you go, pull and then unlock sign. So you do that by pulling up and down. And so if it's locked and I turn this, nothing's gonna change. If it's locked and I, uh, if it's unlocked and I turn it, that's when we start to change. What we need to do is go upwards. I'm gonna, my the tip touched something, so I just ejected it. So we're gonna go upwards to 1000. And when that red one is there, that means like, that is the highest, uh, I guess, the highest scale that this pipette will go. It's telling you that this is as high as it'll go. And uh, now we uh, lock the top to make it so that it doesn't move. And now we can put the top on. It's, oh my God, sorry. I bet you're screaming at me. No, it's 500. Good job. Um, so let's think about this. We're doing 500 each. We're doing 500 microliters of the glycerol um, and then 500 microliters of the culture. 500, okay, of the thousands. So this is their, this goes by your um, highest denominators essentially. So uh, this is our 1000s, this is our 100s and this is our 10s. And then anything in between the 10s, there are little baby ticks in here um those would be your ones okay so now we're back on business all right now we need to pass this uh glycerol through the flame so i'm going to put the lid in between my fingers in this case and i'm going to pass the top through the glycerol a couple times and now i always check again make sure that i'm pipetting the right amount that's how we catch our mistakes um when you're using glycerol, sometimes it could settle out or separate based on the density layers. I like to give it a whirl. You could do that before you take the lid off. Um, you're gonna pull up. So to pipette, you are going to depress your thumb to the first stop. There are two stops you could see in that top corner. So I'm going to push down to the first stop, not the second stop, first stop, first stop. Pull down to the first stop, dip the tip in Rem pull up your thumb slowly so you make sure you get no bubbles and then look to make sure you have no bubbles i don't have bubbles there i just have uh, a little bit of liquid on the outside so that looks good we're gonna pass this through the flame again if you want you could put it down lightly put the lid on and depress here depress the volume from the pipetter. Great. So if we were to look inside of it, there's liquid in there. Now I'm going to switch pipette tips and do this again. Because I hadn't touched anything else, I could have, pardon me one second, I have a timer. Okay. So we could have kept the same tip on, especially if you didn't touch anything and there's nothing else in the tubes. But if we're gonna be really, really sterile here, let's change the pipette tip. And I wanna make that a rule of thumb, especially when you're beginning, change the pipette tip every single time that you use a new solution. So this is an empty tube. And then we are going to 
pipette the volume in it. I'm going to use my thumb to depress it slowly and then go through the second stop here. So you go slowly down to the first stop and then push through the second stop to get everything out of the tip on that second time. Cool. Now, um, from here, we are going to find the corresponding culture to, which is the TW purple one. And it has culture in it. Um, you wanna make sure that everything hasn't settled to the bottom. I took these out kind of a long time ago now. So um, sometimes the bacteria will settle if they've been in, in there not shaking for that long. Um, and then we're gonna use the same sterile, sterile technique as, as done previously to remove the lid, pass through the top of the flame, um, depress through the first stop, put the um, tip in, you have to avoid the pipette tip that you use to inoculate, pull up the media. And in this case, you wanna almost uh, board a pipette mix. So you wanna make sure that you're mixing the culture and getting all that bacteria resuspended. And then you pull up, let go, the, like let go of the thumb. And now you have withdrawn your culture. Pass, um, pass the top of the tube through the flame to sterilize it and put the cap back on. And then if you want to feel more comfortable, you can pick up this tube and um, depress into the, uh, depress the volume in there. And you, we really need to focus on pipette mixing here. We need to do this, you know, maybe upwards of 10 times because you really want to mix these two samples together. Uh, their densities are very different and they will stay separated if you don't physically mix them. All right, so now we are going to uh, put the top back on and this one is done and I'm gonna move it up in my tray so I know that I've done that one. We'll do the second one, the second copy that we have for this. So let's do this again, pass it through the flame a little bit faster now, pipette up, maybe pipette mix a couple times, pipette up 500, pass it through the flame, put the lid back on, put it down. And now we can um, mix this really quickly. And I can see it a little swirly in there. And then we will get rid of this pipette too. Um, to get rid of the tip that you have on, there's this ejector and you just press that down and that just gets rid of it. And that's gonna go into biohazard waste. All right, so that's how we make the sterile, um, sterile stored cryogenic vials. Um, we these isolates are now strains that we can be in our freezer in our library, and we could always go back to them if we wanted to. Um, they are going to go in this uh, cryogenic or Eppendorf tube box. That's a freezer box. It's just cardboard, and the inside has a bunch of different slots for tubes. Um, once I make it, I'm going to label the top and label the side, probably one through nine here, and then A through A through uh, I down here there. And that just gives me a way of keeping track of the bacteria. And then I have the corresponding number um, of the box, like box one position uh, or row A uh, position one, so that we can always keep track of the bacteria that we're working with when we're working with them. Um, and from there, I'm gonna do the rest of these, but um, that's what the basics are for this one. We'll um, talk about doing a bacterial DNA extraction next time. See ya.